morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today I have a, a message to you, my sisters, that is important for all of us to recognize that the time we're living in is, is uh, right before our Master, Jesus Christ, returns for a holy bride. And so we want to remember how important it is, every single choice that we make, everything that we do. Let's begin today in the Gospel according to Matthew. And this would be Matthew 13. And I want to begin here in verse 36. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom is heaven, like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl, of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I'm going to stop here, and I do encourage all of you to go back and read the entirety of Matthew 13, because if you do, it will bless you mightily. What I want to talk to you about is the decisions that each one of us makes every single day, and every person has a choice about what they do and whether or not we obey the word of God or whether or not we follow our own heart. We do things that are pleasing unto our flesh. We choose the world, the flesh, and the devil. You see, it has always been about whether or not people love the word of God and obey the word of God or whether instead they choose to go after the forbidden fruit the, the fruit that promises us beauty and fame and power and things that are pleasing to our flesh and the pride of life, the things of this world, whether it be our intellect, our own ideas, our emotions, the things of this world, be it career or money or fame. It's always been about whether or not you love the tr truth or instead you prefer the lies of the serpent. Chapter 3, we can read of how the first woman was deceived. Genesis 3, verse 6, we read, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and it was a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. This is the first dilemma. And in the first dilemma, when the serpent approached 
the first woman. That woman chose the wrong path. She chose for the things that look good, the things that, that are pleasing to the flesh and the pride of life, the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's always been the same dilemma, dilemma ever since the beginning, and it's that dilemma now. And so what happens in, in the heart of a Christian sometimes is we can be distracted with the things of this world, with things that are in our heart, things, things that present us with choices every single day. And in order to be a Christian, one must choose to seek after the pearl of great price and to sell all that we have in exchange for that heavenly treasure. It's not about the things that we can see. It's not about the things that we feel right now. It's not about the things of this world. Rather, it's about the everlasting kingdom of our God, the things that right now are invisible. I want to invite you to come with me to to read in the scripture about these choices that we each must make every single day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and begin in verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Those who love the truth choose the heavenly things, the things that are not seen. Those who prefer to be enticed by the serpent choose the things that are seen, the things that are pleasing to the flesh, pleasing to the eye, pleasing to the mind. And they, they entertain themselves with theology. So they will use theology in order to convince themselves that the word of God says something other than what it says. In Luke chapter 8, so let's go to Luke chapter 8. We want to understand what it is to love the truth and how it is that some people do not. So in Luke chapter 8, let's read verses 10 and 11. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. When we want to understand the parable of the wheat and the tares, we can see that, that those who are of the kingdom, those who have been sown into the field by the Son of God, have believed the word of God, and this is the life that is in us. We are born again by the incorruptible seed. There are people, though, among us who are born of a different seed. And that different seed are the children of the devil. And I know this sounds like really severe, but it's not my word. It's God's word. So those who have received the love of the truth, and this is not something we did for ourselves. If you have the love of the truth, it's something that God gave to you. And not everyone has it. There's people who prefer their iniquity. And they use theology to stand amongst those who love the truth, proclaiming themselves to be godly people. When what they do is they choose theology, which is the seed of the liar. When the serpent spoke to the first woman, he lied to her. He told her that she wouldn't die if she ate of the, the forbidden fruit. He told her that it would make her wise, that, that it would be good for her. And what happened was it gave her a wisdom that caused death. And there are many, many people 
presently in this time who prefer that corrupted seed because it's pleasing to the eyes, the flesh, and the mind. It's the wisdom of the world that promises everlasting life when what it leads to is death. So when there's a pearl of great price, a Christian, and this is a true Christian, someone who loves the truth, and they realize that the kingdom of heaven is about everlasting life. What is happening here is very temporary. What we are in right now is a proving ground. We're in a place where people get to choose. They get to choose either what pleases their own heart and their own mind and their own flesh, their emotions, their iniquity, or they can turn and sell everything and buy the things that are everlasting. So our light affliction that we're in right now is when it's not comfortable for our flesh to sell all that we have and buy the pearl of great price. I want to read a little bit more about what this means for those of you who are my sisters in Christ. Let's turn to Luke chapter 14 and begin in verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish it. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to, to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear let him hear. You see, the world will hate those who serve Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. They will have an issue with it. It will bother their flesh or their heart or their mind in some way. As they're not content, the people who are the tares of this world are not content to believe what they believe and let you believe what you believe because the darkness hates the light, and the light exposes the deeds of those who prefer the darkness. And so they'll come after you. They will accuse you. And we can read of this in the scripture. Let's go to Matthew 24. So when we're in this battle that we're in, so we're in a battle right now. We are soldiers in the army of Jesus Christ. And we are standing for the truth in a world that is full of darkness and evil and lies. And for that reason, those who are of the lie, so they believed the lie, they are of that corrupted seed that was planted by the serpent in their hearts. They hate the truth, and therefore they will attack those who are in the light. And we want to read here, um, pardon me, Let's read in verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. 
and he shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. The nature of the, the battle that we are in is about the choice. It's about choosing whom we love and serve. If we love Jesus Christ, then we love his commandments and we do what he says. And there are many who want all the trappings of religion, but they don't want to do what he says, and they use theology to make excuse. But those who love the truth are willing to lay down everything, even their own life, for that pearl, the pearl of great price, the everlasting kingdom of our God. So let's turn now to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we can read here a little bit more about this. Let's start in verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. These are the people who love the truth. The, the people who see the everlasting things and choose the heavenly treasure. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You see, it was never a thing that a Christian had a prosperous and wealthy and famous and intellectually pleasing life, that the world would put you up on a pedestal and give you great praise for seeking after the kingdom of God. Verily, to take up one's cross, to bear one's cross, means that we walk alone to the kingdom, and the way unto life is narrow. Few find it. A dear brother of mine has said, Sometimes he said, the, the road, the way onto life is one man wide. That means we don't get to carry anyone with us. We don't get to carry anything with us. We have to have our mind and our heart and our eyes set upon the things that are invisible. And when we're living that way, we will suffer as Jesus Christ suffered. For we are not above our master, and if they hated him, they will hate us also. See? So let's read again here. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to compare, be compared with the glory which shall be be revealed in us. Those who love the truth have their mind and their heart set upon the everlasting kingdom. And those around us who don't love the truth, who instead love a lie, can't see that. They can't hear the truth in a parable. They are vain. They are thinking that they're inheriting everlasting life when they are choosing their own iniquity. I want to turn now to, in the Gospel according to Luke, and I'm going to read a portion of a story here, but here a, a young ruler of the people, a wealthy young man, approached Jesus Christ and asked him what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. And there, were, there was a conversation here. I want to read the end of the conversation here in verse 22. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute it unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, 
and follow me. And when he had heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Now let's go to the Gospel according to Matthew, and let's read in chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Let's begin in verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. You see, to attain the kingdom, to attain the kingdom of heaven, the heavenly inheritance with Jesus Christ, what is required of us? Everything. Everything. Family, friends, career, money, life. Life. If you're not willing to lay down all, then you will not inherit everlasting life. Some of you have some things that it's time to put them down. Maybe it's it's uh, a, a pharmaceutical drug. Maybe it's someone in your life that is an idol unto you. Maybe it's time to recognize that, that they get to decide too whom they're going to choose, but you need to set your mind to head for the kingdom and not look back. You have to be willing to lay down your stuff, your house, your career, the opinions of the people that are around you. Because if you're not willing to be hated, if you're not willing to endure unto the end as our master did, then you are not worthy of his kingdom. And this is true of me. It's true of everyone. Everyone has a choice. And so, you know, when we set our mind upon the everlasting things, that means that we give up the things of this world. And verily, when we do that, people will hate us. To say here is that the difference between the wheat and the tares is the tares are sown by the wicked one in the field, and the, the good seed, those who are the children of the kingdom, are sown by the Son of God. And the seed that is planted in a Christian's heart is the truth, the truth of God's word. And those who are children of the kingdom believe the word of God and do it. Those who do not believe the word, who refuse to hear the word, are those who are of that other seed, the seed of the liar. And we want to recognize that we need to decide whom it is that we love and serve. Every single one of us. It's not a choice that anyone can make for you. I can't tell you what to do. I can only present unto you what the word of God says. And let God be true and every man a liar. Let's read in verse 47 of John chapter 8. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Over and over again, when we read about the life of the Son of God, when he was on this earth, that the religious people contended with him, and the poor, and the sick, and the brokenhearted, the ones who were guilty of sin and knew it, who repented of their sin, that those people, the ones that the religious people looked down upon, that the ones that the religious people accused, that those were the ones who had a broken heart that could receive the truth of God. You know, I've said in my testimony on this channel that I'm very glad that my heart was completely broken, 
that I didn't receive the things of this life. I was scorned and hated, and, and I wasn't, you know, holier than anyone. I was probably chief among sinners. But the truth is, is that because the Lord saw that my heart was broken, he then made it so I could receive the truth. And, and so if I have to lay down everything, I don't care because I know what my Savior has done unto me. I know that he has given me his truth, that he saved my soul from the pit. And those who are brokenhearted love the truth because they know what it is that Jesus Christ has done for them. And the religious people want all the benefits of this world and they hate the truth. They hate the truth because the light exposes the darkness. The wicked things that are done in the darkness are exposed by the truth. And when Jesus Christ came into the world, he was hated because of this. John chapter 3. And let's read here the truth that we all need to understand. Let's read in verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So people who love the truth don't mind the word of God. And if the word of God exposes in them something that needs to be taken away, they want it to be taken away. They're willing to crucify their flesh. Let's read in Luke chapter 8 and verse 21. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Some of us have things standing between us and the kingdom. And I'm not immune from this. We are all on a battlefield. And on this battlefield, what we're doing is we're fighting for the, the prevalence that truth will prevail in our heart and in our life so that we can inherit everlasting life. To inherit everlasting life, one must be willing to lay down the world, the flesh, and the devil, the things that look good, that, that feel good, and that seem intelligent. Instead, we believe the word of God and we do it, even unto death. Is there a little piece of cloth standing bef between you and everlasting life? Do you not want to cover your head? Do you not want to leave adultery? Do you not want to leave sorcery and witchcraft? Do you not want to leave the religious system in that you're in because all your family are, and friends are there. If those things are obstacles to you, what I want to say to you today, my sisters, is that we're out of time. We're out of time. That soon, eternity will open up. And where you spend eternity will be determined by whether or not you were willing to buy that pearl of great price, to sell all that you have, and by that. And that's the choice that we all have. Yes, people will hate us. Yes, they're going to kill us even. If we're not willing to, to follow Jesus Christ and walk as he walked, we are not worthy of his kingdom. I pray this message has blessed you today, those of you who love the truth. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me or to comment in the comment section below. And may the word of God go forth today and shine brightly and bring many people to the light while there are yet a few moments left. In Jesus' precious name, amen.